So an RTK correction is the most accurate signal in precision agriculture today, reaching as low as one to two centimeters of repeatable accuracy. Things can get a little bit complicated. So in this video, I'm gonna go through everything that you guys need to get going. Hardware, compatibility, infrastructure, and cost estimates as well. Let's go. Yo gang, we're the Farmer Guys, and we're on a mission to teach and to share as much as we can in agriculture. Hopefully giving you guys the tools and education to try something new. Hardware and its relating compatibilities is probably what's going to take the most amount of time investment to understand. So let's break it down by its variables. So number one is the method of RTK. So this is either via radio or via NTRIP. And then number two is your correction receiver. So the correction generation, which is your base station and also the correction receiver. So what is on your roving device, your tractor, your combine harvester. So kicking off with a method of RTK. So you have two options. There's radio RTK, which as you'd expect from the name is sending RTK via radio frequency. And then you also have NTRIP or what we know as network transportation of RTCM via internet protocol. It's a horribly complex acronym, but hang with me here. And this is sending RTK corrections through, you guessed it, internet protocols so via the internet. So we have radio and we have internet ways of sending the correction. Starting with radio RTK hardware requirements. So in this case, we need a base station and the base station is responsible for generating the correction signal. Without a base station, you have no RTK. The base station hardware itself is split into two separate parts. You have number one, the GNSS antenna and receiver. So this is in charge of generating that RTK correction. And then you have what is transmitting that RTK correction, which in this case is going to be our radio. So these are the two parts that you need to consider. Sometimes they come together, sometimes they can be separate depending on the manufacturer. Alternatively, you may be lucky enough to be within an RTK network that has already been set up by a third party. In this case, all you need to do is approach them and request a subscription to use their RTK network. On the flip side of this, some governments do also operate their own RTK networks for civil purposes. So you may be in luck if there's a government based RTK network, these can also be used for agricultural purposes. So do some investigation to see if you are already in an RTK network that you can leverage. Then there's the correction receiver. So we've got the base station set up, it's generating corrections. Now you need the hardware on your machines to receive that correction. In this case, we'll be using a radio attached to what I'm assuming you already have a GNSS receiver on board your machines. And then in addition, that GNSS receiver will also require a high accuracy unlock. So bear that in mind, and that is per machine, a radio and a high accuracy unlock. Okay, so now onto NTRIP hardware. So if you're running an NTRIP setup RTK system, Basically, the only difference is going to be your transmission method. So in Radio RTK, we were using the receiver, and that receiver is pretty much the same with NTRIP as well, except now for the transmitter side, because we're transmitting that RTK via the internet, we need to connect that receiver to put the corrections onto the internet. So this is done via connecting to a modem, the same way you connect to a modem in your house to access the internet. It's no different for NTRIP. And that's pretty much the only difference between Radio RTK and NTRIP RTK as far as hardware is concerned. On the correction receiver side, you will also need a modem, okay, to put your machine on the internet and receive that correction signal from the base station. As well as the modem, you of course will need a SIM card and data plan, so bear that in mind and then also that high accuracy unlock for your receiver. Moving on to compatibility. Now this is a topic that is usually quite complicated, but I'll try my best to simplify it. 
And this is particularly applicable to anyone that's using um, different manufacturers precision farming equipment. So if you've got Trimble and you're also running Topcon, this is important to understand, especially with Radio RTK. So when it comes to compatibility, there are two things to consider. Number one is the RTK correction format. And number two is the RTK correction protocol, the transmission protocol, which is generally only applicable to radio RTK. Now, obviously with NTRIP, we'll be using the internet protocol or IP protocol as indicated by the name. So transmission protocols are really aimed at radio RTK. Kicking off with RTK correction format, this is basically the language of RTK. So this is comparable to iOS versus Android. Now within precision agriculture, many different manufacturers like to use their own proprietary formats. For example, you have John Deere that use NCT, you've got Trimble and CNH that like to use CMR. However, the industry open format, which is what I would advise using, is RTCM and this is the most broadly used RTK format. No matter what format you are using, all you guys need to ensure is that your base station receiver and your machine receivers have the same compatible Yay! RTK correction format. So for example, if you were using a John Deere base station, you couldn't use Trimble or CNH RTK equipment with this base station. They do not have compatible formats. Your best bet, as I said, is to select a base station that uses that open RTCM format. For example, a company like Novatel and their receivers provide this format. Then there's RTK transmission format or protocol. Now this really only applies to radio RTK because with NTRIP, we are using that internet protocol, which is standardized. There's no need to worry about compatibility. So when we're talking about radio transmission protocols, we are referring to how the base station and your machines communicate to each other. Different radio manufacturers will have different protocols, but once again, all you guys need to ensure is that your base station radio and your machine radios are compatible and have matching protocols. Of course, as well as matching protocols, we need to match the frequencies. So in RTK, the most commonly used frequency range is UHF or 430 to 470 megahertz. In other parts of the world, 900 megahertz are also used, such as the US and Australia. Okay, so onto infrastructure. Now, when I say infrastructure, what I'm talking about is the land and the buildings that you have available to you on your farm operation. A very important thing to consider when setting up RTK. All farms and operations are different, but here are some guidelines. If using radio RTK, the most important factor for performance is the height of your radio antenna. Now, when it comes to your height of radio antenna, the higher the better, and generally speaking, base stations are set up at the highest point of your farm operation. So bear that in mind. For an entry base station, all that's needed is a location where you can connect that base station to a modem and put the correction source on the internet. For the base station GNSS antenna, all that's required is a 360 view of the sky. And also that that antenna be mounted at least two meters away from any reflective surfaces, such as a tin roof on a barn. Overall height of the antenna is not an important factor. We just need that clear view of the sky. Point number three, base stations have a rated accuracy usually around the 20 kilometer mark. It's possible to go beyond this and receive a correction beyond this. However, bear in mind that the further you go from the base station, the more your accuracy will degrade. Undulating terrains and forested areas on your land can block RTK radio signals. In this case, an RTK repeater can be strategically set up to bounce or repeat the signals around these obstacles. Now bear in mind, this doesn't extend the range of RTK, it's still rated at that 20 kilometers from the source of the correction, so from the base station. But RTK repeaters are a good solution for any gaps in signals you may have on your farm. Finally, point number five for N-trip configurations. Now, mobile coverage consistency is everything when it comes to RTK performance for N-trip. 3G signals are more than enough to keep you going. However, if you have blind spots or dropouts, 
then your RTK performance will also suffer as a result of this. Just bear that in mind. Note on infrastructure. So there is an option for a mobile base station configuration. For a mobile base station, in this case, we are setting up the base station on a daily basis close to the area of operation. This could be a far more simple but shorter range option for your farm. Tip, make sure in any mobile configuration that your temporary location at your area of operation is marked or is noted. So next time you go back to that same location, you use the exact same location for your base station as well. This is because any shift in base position will also cause a shift in the accuracy of your machines. So bear that in mind, guys. So what's the potential investment for RTK? Well, the good news is that an RTK base station can provide a correction to as many machines within range and compatible with that base station. There are no limits. The bad news is that the initial investment cost is quite high, but I guess this is to be expected when you're dealing with the best correction. Pricing for the correction source, so for the base station. Now, for a radio base station setup, this could set you back anything between 5,000 US dollars to around 10,000 US dollars. Features and specification dependent. For an N-trip configuration base station, you can save a little bit of money by not needing that additional radio. However, you will still need a modem, but expect pricing to still be around that 3,000 to 9,000 US dollar mark. If you are leveraging a third-party RTK network provider, then of course you won't need the base station because they'll take care of all that. However, you will need to pay them a subscription for every machine that you have connected to their network, otherwise known as a license that they give you. So that is an ongoing cost. Then looking at the machine side, so the roving machine side, for each machine you will need the following. Number one, you will need a radio or a modem to receive that correction signal from the base station. Now generally radios are more expensive, so expect to pay around 500 to 2,500 US dollars for a modem or radio. For modems, you can add an additional $100 a year for that data subscription plan that you will need for the SIM card. And you will also need that high accuracy unlock, remember, for the GNSS receiver that you already have on board. Cost is dependent on your current receiver level. Now within precision agriculture, the receivers usually have three levels, base, medium and high and you can expect to pay anything between 1,500 to 2,500 to unlock between each step. My top three takeaways. Number one, RTK radio is much better for flat areas. N-trip is a good option for any farms that have undulating territories and a reasonable mobile network coverage. Number two, when it comes to the base station installation for a fixed base station, remember that that RTK radio antenna height is the single most important factor to RTK performance. Then also remember that that GNS antenna needs a nice, clean 360 view of the sky. Height is not important here. Number three, yes, RTK is a considerable investment at a high cost. However, bear in mind that it also has the biggest return of investment over a longer period. So if you're still making your decision on which precision direction to go, then check out our fundamental series on the Farm How channel or feel free to flick us a message with any questions you may have. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.